So the new year is about to roll around. You're feeling all motivated. You're cleaning your house and your room, defragging your hard drive. This coming year will be the one, the one where you finally become productive and do some game dev. But the problem is maybe you said this last year and maybe even the year before that. You see, I'm not particularly big on these kind of new year's resolutions because I feel that if there needs to be some kind of resolution and something needs to be done, it should be addressed as soon as possible. We shouldn't have to wait for some kind of magical date change to, to address these things. But with that said, I do also recognize the value and power in symbols and concepts like time, which can be leveraged for motivating purposes because it creates a feeling of urgency which can lead to long-term change. But more often than not, it doesn't, <laughs> as I'm sure many of us um, have experienced. And I do know about this because I lived a period of my life like this, chasing those motivational highs, you know, before I finally um, discovered, I, I guess, how to generate my own motivation rather than waiting on external motivation to come to me. And that's, that's part of the solution here. Good planning and preparation is by far the most important thing you can do. You see, you need a strong foundation to build a house. Otherwise, the moment you put a weight on the structure, it will collapse. How does one even plan for a whole year? I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't just say, hey, I want this thing, whatever it may be, and go gung-ho running headfirst into it. I mean, depending on how bad you want it, you might make some ground, but um, I think any military general will tell you you can't um, win a battle without planning. You don't want to just run headfirst in and see what happens. There needs to be strategy or uh, decisive action. So your very first step here is to work out what the hell it is you even want. What are you trying to accomplish? What do you want to do? And this may not always be so obvious because, um, you know, we can get pushed around by um, other people's expectations and we can even confuse ourselves into thinking we want something that actually is not necessarily what we really want and later on in life we realize we've been kind of pursuing the wrong direction and then we go holy crap I've been doing this thing that I never even wanted to do and we see that often where people will have some career in a particular profession maybe they were you know accountants or lawyers because someone told them that's a, a safe job and it's a good job and then you know, 15 years into this, they give it all up and they become whatever, some kind of a baker. But since you are watching this video, I'll assume that your um, goals are around game development or engineering or programming. You know, perhaps you want to ship your first game next year, or perhaps you simply want to start a project, you know, or a YouTube channel, or maybe you just want to start learning and um, taking game dev or programming more seriously as a life direction which I strongly encourage you to do, by the way. <laughs> well, you have 365 days to make that happen. And it's quite amazing how much can really be achieved in one year of dedicated, productive, consistent work. And it's equally amazing and quite alarming at how little can be done in one year and how this time can actually be squandered. So choose something, make a choice. Don't get caught up in, oh, I don't know what I want to do. Just make a choice because to make a choice and pick a direction and work towards it over one year is sure as hell better than not making a choice and just idling by while another year rolls by. Because whatever it is you choose, whatever progress you make can lead to other things as well. So, you know, it'll um, new things will emerge on your on your adventure. A bit like Skyrim where you'll be heading for a, for a main quest and suddenly some farmer will come out, hey, help me kill some rats in my cave. Actually, they never talk like that in Skyrim, but yeah, <laughs> you get the idea. And of course, you are not obligated to do anything. It's your life, it's your time. You can live it or waste it as you see fit. This is completely up to you. All right, so you now have a goal or an idea of what you want to achieve. Cool. So what is the plan to get there? How do we even make that happen? You know, how do we get there? Do we even possess the understanding? You see, depending on what it is we are trying to achieve, this may be more or less obvious. So you want to make and release your first game. Okay, well, what does it take to make a game? You know, there's code, there's art, there's design, there's music. What is your plan for each of these to make it happen? 
you know, you've got to break it all down. I would suggest to start thinking like an engineer and it can be useful with this mindset to think backwards, reverse engineering the situation to find a solution, a process. You know, break things down into smaller goals. What is the plan for each of these? This is pretty much how anything is achieved, especially making a game, because a game is basically um, comprised of small goals and milestones which are progressively reached to make a final product. Set time frames for each of your tasks. With the understanding, you'll probably overshoot your estimates. So try to factor that in honestly. You know, developers or engineers have an uncanny ability to overestimate what can be achieved in a set time especially when starting out, you know, but that's fine because there's great utility in having some kind of a time frame uh, for an activity. You know, when I started working in game development as a junior, I would often get asked by management to do time breakdowns for larger projects, you know, breaking down all the different subcomponents, what it would take. And every time I would approach these time breakdowns super confidently and I'd write these very impressive time breakdowns that people were like, whoa, he's gonna build it that quickly. But I wasn't factoring in all the different things that might disrupt my day. And especially when you're working in an office, you know, there's a lot of distractions, there's, there's meetings, people are distracting you, people are asking questions, you're, you know, socializing sometimes and, you know, you might get a Nerf gun to the head. These kind of things will always come up. So your, your run is never as smooth as you expect it to be. So you've got to factor those things in. And I had a senior developer who was sitting by my side and um, he understood the situation and he was like, well, I have some advice for you. He said, just double whatever you think it's going to take. <laughs> With time and experience, you get a lot better at estimating these kind of things. You know, it's a real skill. So once you have a clear plan laid out, it's time to grind. And no matter how you cut these things, there's always going to be work involved. Grueling, consistent work. But if you love it, which you should, because, you know, game development and engineering is freaking awesome. <laughs> and if you don't love it, then, you know, what are you doing? Maybe you should find something else you like um, because you got to love it, man. But at least give game development or software development a proper go because it could be that you love it, but you don't yet realize you do because you've run into the early resistance point of the, of the rather steep learning curve. And you're like, well, this is too hard for me. But quite often it is. You just got to get past that early point and you're like, well, I actually love this. So don't miss out because you don't want to end up passing up on something that could be a real life direction. It's also useful to have a good starting point to work from. And I just released a new low cost Unity asset, which is just that. A foundation to learn from and to use to make responsive 2D platformers. All controls are pre-mapped, including mobile, and everything is fully customizable. It really is a good starting point for beginners to make games from, and I hope you guys find it useful. So anyways, I didn't want this to become some kind of, you know, full multi-step process here. I just wanted to point a few of you meaningfully in the right direction towards the starting line. You see, a lot of people never even make it to the starting line because they just can't orient themselves towards it. So for your own sake, don't let yet another year go by with nothing to show for it. You know, so many people just live year to year making no um, progress, just watching time go by. Talented people, you know, talented people with natural born abilities and skills, creativity. But you see, most of the time, it's actually because there's just no plan or strategy. You know, no path to follow, no milestones, no map. And without these things, you're basically lost in the weeds. So yeah, why would you want to continue under such circumstances? So roll into the new year armed with not only a target, but a clear plan. Do not skimp on the planning. The planning is everything. It is everything. Do not pass it up. Take your time. Buy yourself a nice little notepad and start kind of, you know, formulating plans and notes as to how you might um, go about this. Because when next year is in full swing and everyone starts falling off the wagon, you and your plan will still be there because you have a map to keep you grounded, focused on the path ahead, powering on. You know, game development and software development is hard work, but it's worth the fight. It really is. It's worth the struggle and hardship because on the other side, there is so much opportunity, happiness and excitement to be found. Grind through the discomfort. You know, you have more strength than you realize. Don't underestimate it. But quite often, your baseline is just not particularly um, strong. 
Because, you know, we live in a, a fairly weak world for the most part, especially if you're living in a Western country. We don't really know that level of hardship that a lot of people did in the old days. So our baseline, our tolerance for hardship is very low. So what we need to do, we're just going to kind of boost up and get used to harder things a little bit. Because once you do that, it makes everything else easier. You know what I mean? Because you've overcome certain levels of adversity. And you think, well, you know, if I've done that, then I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And you, you're a lot more confident in your approach. And if you've not yet seen them, I do have a couple of videos on these kind of topics that I encourage you to watch because they are very useful, I think, if you are in that position where you're starting or looking for direction. So I'll put a link to those uh, down below for your convenience. Well, I wish you all the best and I look forward to seeing you next year. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who have seen me through this year, pushing me on, motivating me to keep making more videos. I really appreciate you guys. You're doing good work. Thank you for that. And if any of you want to chat, come by the Discord. We have a nice group of people there. I'm active there. In a lot of helpful things going on, a lot of creative discussions. See you in the next video. And as always, all the best on your game dev adventures.